give us just a bit about your background and what brought you to the point of being a theologian today? And I know I'm asking a very large question, but just a, a quick synopsis of where you grew up and how you got to be a theologian. Yeah. So I'm a native Californian and my mother was born in California. You don't really meet people whose parents were born in California. So we go way back. Uh, I was not born into a Christian home. I was the only child, but hmm. I was born into a respectable home. And so my parents sent me to Sunday school at the right time. They did not go to church. They just somehow thought, I guess that was what people in the 50s and 60s were programmed to do, right? Send their kids to Sunday school. So I went off, but I came back with questions. And my mother couldn't answer my questions that I was bringing back from Sunday school. And so she read the Bible for herself and was convicted and became a Bible-believing Christian. So that was when I was three. <laughs> I think maybe I could even say the first person I led to Christ uh, was my mother. But That's so awesome. For all, yeah, for all intents and purposes, though, I was raised in a Christian family because she had my father read the Bible, and they both started attending church. And then, interestingly enough, uh, started looking for a church that my mother felt was biblical enough. And so that's part of my DNA, this question, what does it mean to be biblical? I was raising it as a child, and then through my mother's concern that we attend a biblical church, it just got imprinted into me. So uh, happily, uh, one of the biblical churches we found was near Westmont College, because I grew up in the Santa Barbara area. Westmont mm -hmm. College is a Christian liberal arts college. And so from a very young age, I was around Westmont College people teachers. And one of the most important people in my life was a biblical scholar named Robert Gundry. Uh, I later studied with him at Westmont. He taught me the New Testament. He was also the man who baptized me, and he was the man who eventually suggested I go into systematic theology. You know, when, I, when he first suggested that, I was in college. I wanted to be like him. I wanted to be a biblical scholar. And so initially, I was I was kind of hurt that he said, don't be a New Testament scholar, be a systematic theologian. I'm thinking, you don't want me? <laughs> but, but in fact, I, I have to give him credit. I think he saw past my, you know, the desire to be like him. Mm. And he saw the kind of person I was, the range of interests. I'm not quite sure what he saw, but he, I think he was right. He told me to go into systematic theology and he convinced me that at the time, at least, there was a more urgent need among evangelicals for systematic theologians than there were biblical scholars. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he was probably right at that about that at the time. So, you know, I took that seriously. Um, from that point on, when he when he gave me a clear direction, I followed it. I'm still following it. <laughs> That's incredible. I, I didn't know that you grew up in California, and I didn't know that that other part either. Where did the piano come in? Uh, you know, again, my parents thought that every young man should have piano lessons <laughs> to be well cultured. And um, I, it only got serious, though, when I entered college and had a wonderful teacher who helped me to understand that playing the piano was much more about getting the notes right. Mm. And later in my life, uh, I've been able to use a lot of the lessons he taught me about performing music uh, in, in relation to performing the Bible. So I, I see lots of connections. In God's providence, you know, it was more than just a musical instrument. It was a lesson in interpreting texts and mm. um, to the glory of God and making beauty and, and all sorts of things. I have to ask this one. This one is, wasn't one of the questions, but because you're a musician, because you're, you're you love piano, is there a favorite piano movie that you have? A favorite piano movie? A movie. Well, they like a, about a composer or about a musician or there's a there is a moving uh, uh, film about Beethoven and and having to compose in and and losing his hearing. You know, uh, I forget the name of it. Uh, but that that's just a compelling story. I, I've often struck by that thought, you know, a, a mm. composer who cannot actually hear 
what he's composed, but he can imagine it somehow. It's incredible to think of how he did that. I, I still yeah. have I have no idea on how that was accomplished. So you you went into theology, and then you you went off and you you taught now for how many years? You've been teaching. Well, look, can theology? I just fill in one blank, Travis? Sure, because uh, it fits in with music as well. Um, in college, I, I did a music ministry in Europe over the summer as a pianist, and I met someone there who actually invited me back to France, this was, to direct a year-long program of evangelism using classical music. And I was, I was 21, <laughs> and this just sounded fantastic to me. It was an opportunity to put my theological education to work in the sake of Christian mission in a country that was very secular. So that, whole, that whole challenge just, uh, so I spent a year doing short-term mission, thinking through how to use classical music for the sake of evangelism. And the other reason that's important is uh, I met my wife uh, during that mission year. My wife is French. And so music, France, and theology, they all they all mix together. That is a, that's a pretty fascinating story. 21 years of age, they asked you to do that. So yeah, not, again, I'm not quite sure why. I, I think probably because he thought, he maybe it was just that he wanted me to be a kind of administrative assistant, but I actually took over. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty... I mean, I, I came with ideals, right? I didn't want to use classical music simply as a gimmick. I had to find an organic connection between classical music and the gospel. And I worked hard at, at you know figuring out what could that be. And I finally landed on something that I think was the perfect harmonizing theme, if I can put it that way. Mm. And it was the theme of joy. So we actually had 90 concerts over a summer and we called the whole thing the festival of the joy of music. And we'd always start with a joyful piece, but then we would have someone come up and address the audience and say, you know, we hope you enjoyed that. But we also believe that joy isn't simply a passing emotion. We believe there's a, a foundation for joy. And then so slowly during the concert, we would explain that we live in a creation that is, in, in fact, a composition, a harmonious composition, but it's been flawed by sin. And now there's disharmony and, you know, violence and darkness and so on. And yet the composer, not content to live, leave the peace, you know, in a mess, the composer has entered into the peace. Mm. <laughs> and that's, you know, God the Son becoming one of us to put things right. So during the course of the evening, as we're doing music, we're also weaving in the story of the gospel. That is absolutely incredible. Did you did you have a lot of people come? Uh, yeah, because it was you know we did PR. I, I was the I did everything. This is before computer age, so I had to hand make posters. But we also here's the other thing. I I was convinced that if we were to serve the church, we had to work with local churches. So part of what I did during that year was I traveled the country with a little briefcase and opened it up like a fuller brush salesman and said, could you use an orchestra this summer for evangelism? <laughs> and so we, we worked every, every concert was in conjunction with the local church for follow-up purposes. Our, by the way, we had three groups touring that summer and the choir in which my wife and I sang was led by Don Hustad, which was who was Billy Graham's organist. And Don, after the summer, was so inspired himself that he wrote up an account of it. It's an essay called Bach as Missions Outreach, and you can find it in the International Review of Missiology. 